Alright, let's talk Excel. You know, that program filled with rows and columns of data, used around the world in industries such as business, project management, data science, and more. However, here's something not everyone knows. Buried within Excel lore lies a rivalry that sparked debates, divided users, and made even the most experienced users pick sides. Some Excel functions, they're good. Others, they're great. But every now and then, you get a couple of functions that completely change the game, creating the literal line in the sand between beginners and advanced users. Don't believe me? Take a look at this. These job postings were put up just recently. These aren't just features, they're essentials, like learning how to read and write if you want to work anywhere near data. Today, we're getting into one of Excel's greatest debates, VLOOKUP versus INDEX MATCH. Memes are made, arguments break out in forums, entire Excel communities are divided into camps, and they're ready to defend their choice to the bitter end. Let's take a look at some of these online posts on one of my go-to sites Reddit, and I'm sure that there won't be too many posts on this topic in recent years. Wait, there's over 10,000 posts on the topic? It looks like we're just gonna have to pick a couple and see what hot takes users have on the subject. So this user was asking what function should they use? With the first comment replying back, Whichever you understand and get the correct result, that's the preferred method. Alright, that's not much of a hot take, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, here's an example of a user bashing VLOOKUP. This user is straight up calling VLOOKUP useless. Wow, that's harsh. Here's a user that's praising index match, calling it one of the greatest formulas ever. That's some pretty high praise. And here's a literal hot take. This user is calling VLOOKUP the devil's function. Oh my. And here's one more post where someone's actually praising VLOOKUP, calling it a fantastic function and how we should stop bashing it. And there's some pretty good points in here, such as VLOOKUP being easier to learn and remember, especially for beginners, and that 9 times out of 10, VLOOKUP will do the job just fine. Both of which are true statements. Alright, so we've seen how Reddit users feel about these two functions, and it's clear that VLOOKUP is no stranger to strong opinions. But with a lot of users bashing VLOOKUP, what exactly is it about VLOOKUP that made it so popular in the first place? And with that, let's go through a little refresher of the VLOOKUP function. In this workbook, we have product IDs listed in a drop-down list, and currently we have product ID 102 selected. Using this product ID, we want to look up and return the current price, quantity, and product name with the help of this lookup table here. To return the current price, we're going to enter in the VLOOKUP function in this cell here, and then go through its arguments. So the lookup value is going to be our product ID in this cell, and then our table array is going to be this cell range here, where the lookup value column is going to be the first column in our table array. Then for column index number, we're going to enter in 2, because the current price column is the second column in our table array, and we want to find an exact match. Pressing enter we get the result $250 returned to us. Now let's do it again to get the stock quantity. So in this cell here, let's enter in VLOOKUP again, and then our lookup value will still be our product ID, and the table array is going to be this cell range here, and then our column index number will be 3 because stock quantity is the third column in our table array, and then we also want an exact match too. Then pressing enter, we get the result 10 returned to us. And with two VLOOKUP functions created, we can go ahead and cycle through these product IDs and see that the current price and stock quantity change as we change our product IDs. And we can start to see why VLOOKUP is so popular. It's a simple one function solution, making it accessible and easy to learn, especially for beginners looking to make that jump. But it does have its limits. The first is that it's sensitive to any changes in the structure of the table array. So if we were to add or remove columns, something will probably break. Like let's say that I wanted to insert this last year's price column into the table array. Once I do this, we can see the results of our VLOOKUP function change to incorrect values. And in order to fix these, we'd have to go back into the functions and update the column index number, which can be a hassle. The second disadvantage is that VLOOKUP can only search down into the right of the lookup column, meaning that it cannot look to the left. So for example, let's say that I'm trying to return product name, and I use vlookup here, my product ID is my lookup value, 
the table array is going to be something like this and I try to use negative 1 in my column index number and with an exact match. Now when I press enter, we get an error returned to us because the VLOOKUP function doesn't recognize negative 1 or any negative number in the column index number argument. In other words, it just doesn't work. Now that we've seen how VLOOKUP works, let's talk about its competitor index match. Since index match is a combination of two functions, let's focus on one function at a time. The index function returns a value in an array or range of cells based on the specific row number. So if we wanted to return the current price for product ID 102, in this cell here, we can type in the index function. And the array is going to be this cell range here that contains all of the current prices. And if we look at what position product ID 102 is in, it's going to be the second row of this array. So we'll type in two and then press enter and we get the current price $250 returned to us. So typing in the number two in our index function worked in this case, but if I was to change the product ID to a different one, we can see that the current price remains unchanged. So in order to make that row number argument dynamic, that's where we're gonna use the match function. So let's enter in the match function down here in a different cell. Our lookup value is gonna be our product ID, and the lookup array is going to be the cell range that contains all our product IDs. And just like the lookup, we're going to be looking for an exact match. Pressing enter, we get the value 2 returned to us. But now, when we change the product ID, we're going to get a different row number. So with that, let's go into our function like this, and we're going to cut, and then we're going to paste it over top of this hard-coded 2 press enter and now we got our index match complete and when we change product IDs we get a different price returned to us so let's do it again for the stock quantity but all in one go so in the cell here let's enter in the index function the array is going to be this cell range here that contains all of our stock quantities and then we're going to enter in the match function for the row number argument for the lookup value is our product ID the lookup array is this cell range of all the product IDs, and we're looking for an exact match. Closing off our functions, pressing enter, we get the result 10 returned to us, and now we get the same results as our VLOOKUP function. And again, if we change the product ID to a different one, both current price and stock quantity results change. Now finally, we'll do what VLOOKUP couldn't and look up the product name. So in our last cell here, let's enter in index. Our array is going to be all of our product names, and we're gonna enter in match. Our lookup value is a product ID once more, and our lookup array is this cell range here, and we're looking for an exact match. Closing both functions off, we get an actual answer returned to us rather than an error. So here it says standing desk, and if we change it to a different product ID, we get a different product name. And now we can start to see how people would rather use index match over VLOOKUP. Index match is flexible and it can look in any direction. It's also unaffected by any changes in the lookup table. Like let's say I wanted to insert last year's price again in our lookup table like this. We can see that the results of the index match functions remain unchanged. And therefore it makes it more reliable and can perform more complex dynamic lookups. But just like VLOOKUP, there are some disadvantages. At the end of the day, index match is still a combination of two functions, which makes it less accessible to learn for beginners. The formula can also get pretty intense, especially when you start using index match match. So what's my take? In my experience, I actually prefer VLOOKUP because more people in general know it. It's one of those next steps that every user takes in their journey to go from a beginner to an advanced user. And the function itself is simple, quick, and intuitive. But index match, I can't deny that it's powerful due to its flexibility and its ability to adapt to changing data structures. But in all honesty, I'm just surprised that this debate is still going on today because back in 2019, Microsoft released XLOOKUP to newer versions of Excel. They took the best parts of VLOOKUP and index match and created a function that should have ended this debate a long time ago. I mean, take a look at these advantages of using XLOOKUP. You can search in any direction, it defaults to an exact match, and it handles errors way better than either VLOOKUP or index match. 
and then take a look at these disadvantages. Yeah, there are none. XLOOKUP is just that good. But here's the thing though, not everyone's updated to the latest versions of Excel. So for the most part, we're still stuck in this VLOOKUP versus index match debate, at least for now. Are you team VLOOKUP, team index match, or team XLOOKUP? Let me know in the comments below. See you in the next video.